Okay, we shall be starting in a few minutes' time. Let people join. Good morning, one and all. So today is our twenty-first session in this electric and hybrid vehicles. We have we are in the middle of the uh, model number three. Uh, so far, we have seen in this uh, say in this uh, module there are two energy generating devices. We have seen so first we have seen the chemical uh, battery that is actually the uh, generating high specific energy. And then we have seen uh, another device which is generating high specific power. That was the ultra capacitor. Now one topic is pending uh, still. That is the battery management system. So I'll be doing it uh, properly. Uh, I'll uh, produce a lecture session on that one one hour lecture session. But before that, a lot of uh, links are uploaded in your Google Classroom on BMS battery management systems. Some very good links. Uh, almost one and a half hour of session. Uh, lecture is uploaded. so please go through that you understand this bms from those uh, four or five sessions then i will have uh, my uh, recorded lecture session and i'll upload it there uh, next we are starting with another uh, mechanical type of energy storage devices which is called as the flywheel or ultra speeds flywheel it is uh, we have already seen it whenever we are doing the uh, si engine that is a spark ignition engine. We had seen that there is a wheel, mechanical wheel, very big thing, which was connected uh, uh, with the crankshaft. And uh, whenever we were uh, talking about the starting of the motor, so at that time we had, we had seen that the pinion of the uh, starter, that was actually initially rotating the flywheel. And the rotation of the flywheel was initiating the process of uh, engine uh, ignition. Okay. So flywheel is a very important thing, which is actually uh, working on the basis of inertia. And uh, what is inertia? Nothing but whenever a tire is rotating, uh, it is rotating very fast. Suddenly, if you put brake, it does not stop instantly. Okay, it takes some time, uh, and then after that, it stops. So whenever there is something rotating or something is moving, uh, so mass and uh, its velocity together, 
it is forming something which is called as an inertia so mass is more inertia will be more mass is less velocity is more uh, and in hence its uh, inertia will be more so this uh, flywheel actually is a energy storage devices it is used as, as a mechanical energy storing device in case of uh, vehicles and this ultra high speed flywheel can be used in case of regenerative braking so it's a very important kind of a thing it's a new kind of a thing uh, you might not have seen and uh, we will talk about a bus actually which was uh, designed only based on the flywheel so flywheel mechanical uh, energy storage device this was running a bus somewhere almost 40 45 years ago in europe uh, they had designed a flywheel based vehicle also very interesting topic we are going to see a video uh, 10 minutes video uh, in today's session so please stick to it so flywheel store energy in mechanical form and uh, the traditional flywheel is a huge steel rotor okay so whenever the rotor is rotating it is connected with the engine when the engine is rotating it is generating the uh, mechanical transmission power which is going through axle and it is going to the wheels and all these things that same uh, engine mechanical power is rotating the flywheel also okay and uh, uh, even if the engine stops but flywheel keep rotating and it keeps on uh, tr transmitting power and if used properly uh, whenever the uh, motor rotation stops then also the flywheel keep on rotating and it keeps on charging uh, uh, and it keeps on uh, rotating the generator at that time so all those configurations topologies we will see today so the traditional flywheel is a huge steel rotor with a mass of hundreds of kilograms that spins on the order of tens of hundreds of rpm so it's hundreds of kilograms so maybe 100 uh, kilogram wheel very big wheel and maybe running with uh, 1500 or 2000 rpm speed and all together so the net effect of mass and speed that is actually uh, the basis of uh, energy that we are finding from a flywheel so and there can be ultra high wheel uh, high speed flywheel so in case of ultra high speed flywheel uh, the mass is not that much big okay mass is smaller in that case but yes it runs with very high speed and it can uh, generate uh, or it can give supply back to the generator so for regenerative kind of action flywheel is used so more than 45 years ago the orlikon engineering company in switzerland made the first passenger bus solely powered by a massive flywheel so it's a very unique thing uh, uh, whatever video you are going to see today shortly uh, that uh, gives a reference of that Orlikon uh, bus. So you will see what is the bus and what is the flywheel there. Uh, it was in Switzerland almost 45, 50 years back. It was there. So the flywheel, whichever was used there, it was going 1500 kg and operating with 3000 RPM. So just, just imagine a 1500 kg uh, thing, uh, wheel is rotating with 3000 RPM. Just imagine how much of inertia uh, that might produce. So it was uh, recharged by electricity at each bus stop. Okay. So initially uh, the bus was starting uh, with some kind of electricity and it was producing some kind of mechanical rotation. And that rotation was given to this uh, flywheel and the flywheel was rotating. And while it was rotating, it was actually generating electricity. So in contrast, uh, the advanced flywheel is a lightweight composite rotor. So whatever was used for in Switzerland or Likon uh, bus, uh, the current flywheel is not a very big thing so whatever ultra high speed flywheel which is actually a topic for your uh, uh, study type of topic case study kind of a thing so here only we will do that ultra high speed speed flywheel what is the construction what are the features uh, what is the material used for flywheel all those things we will see so it's a mechanical kind of a thing so uh, the advanced flywheel is a lightweight composite rotor with a mass of tens of kilograms so tens of kilograms maybe 50 60 70 rotating on the order of tens of thousands of rpm so just see that uh, present day ultra high uh, split high speed flywheel their mass has reduced so from 1500 kg it has come to 60 70 80 kg of weight but this 1500 kg was rotating with 3000 rpm but this 60 70 80 kg flywheel is rotating with thousands of rpm maybe uh, 5000 6000 rpm at all so that's why it is called as ultra high speed flywheel so here the speed is more mass is less Ultra high speed flywheels appears to be a feasible means for fulfilling the stringent energy storage requirement for EV and HEV application. Namely, uh, so these are the advantages or these are the factors you have to remember. 
the high specific energy high specific power long life cycle high energy efficiency quick recharge maintenance free characteristics cost effectiveness and environmental friendly so all these are eight very important features of any uh, clean energy device so this flywheel is also a clean energy device so there is no carbon emission from the rotation mechanical rotation of the uh, device itself it is generating energy and uh, it is regeneratively it is giving the energy back so still we are going in some kind of uh, doubt and all this thing what exactly is happening we are not able to understand uh, so let us see what is the flywheel so first initially what happens is electric power source is there so battery and all those things is there it is converting the dc power into ac power so this is a motor generator actually this is in a combined form so when i'll show you the video we'll find motor generator flywheel uh, there is a magnetic bearing so it is using magnetic levitation so it is a non contact type bearing all those things are put in a certain case okay so this is a flywheel it looks like this so internal construction of the flywheel i will show in the next slide so electrical power source it power converter motor generator set there actually motor is rotating the flywheel and in, after that whenever it is storing energy then when even if the power source is cut at that time flywheel rotates so much that it can run the generator and that can produce the energy and it can give back the energy to the source so there are uh, two main thing that is the energy storage and power transmission transformation these are the two things mainly which is done in case of flywheel so in this case inside the flywheel and flywheel is actually uh, whenever it is rotating so such a mass of 60 70 80 kg and it is rotating with maybe speed of 6000 rpm or so so if there is little misalignment if there is a little here and there then uh, the effect of the accident can be catastrophic okay hence uh this flywheel is actually kept within a casing okay which is a very tough casing it is kept within because if there is an accident or if some misalignment or it tilts a bit uh, with such mass and rotating with such very high uh, velocity it can uh, damage everything okay inside the engine or so that's why this thing is kept within a casing and another important thing is the whenever the flywheel rotates actually it is uh, opposed by a uh, friction that is a air friction or which is also called as a windage loss hence this flywheel whichever casing it is put in that casing is actually made vacuum that means there is no air inside the a uh, casing inside which the flywheel is kept so these are the very important things which i wanted to tell you is first thing is flywheel uh, it can be uh, run by a motor initially so the motor is being powered by the uh, power source battery and power converter and uh, initially it is running the flywheel now after the flywheel runs if you stop the motor then also the flywheel keeps on running because of inertia inertia is given by uh, the formula it is given here that is it is half i into omega square that is a kinetic energy where i is uh, the moment of inertia of the flywheel and what is omega is nothing but the rotational speed of the flywheel and rotational speed we are finding in rpm it goes up to 5000 6000 rpm so huge mass 60 80 kg rotating with maybe 5000 600 rpm uh, so that's why it's a very difficult kind of a thing uh, so it is encased encased in very uh, strong mechanical casing and uh, motor generator all those things are there inside it and then uh, whenever it is rotating it is actually opposed by the air air friction loss is there so to remove that that casing uh, actually it is sucked out all the airs are sucked out of the casing so that there is no windage loss in case of the rotation of the flywheel so it's a mechanical way of storing energy and long back somewhere in 18 uh, 25 or something some uh, uh, war general he had devised this flywheel concept for a torpedo so the history you can find out very interesting history so the flywheel is kept within a vacuum chamber to reduce the wind resistance loss or it is also called as windage loss and these are the main two functions of the uh, flywheel energy storage and power transmission tra power transformation uh, on flat roads the flywheel conserves the mechanical energy so here is the basic principle whenever the vehicle is on the flat road motor is rotating flywheel is also rotating so their flywheel is not uh, giving back or generating the energy so on flat roads the flywheel conserves the mechanical energy when there is a sudden high demand of power at that time the electrical source and flywheel together
auxiliary kind of a supply and it is actually a constant power source so we have seen there are two types of sources that is specific energy source battery is a specific energy source specific energy is produced uh, or it is mainly the job of how much reactant is there and how much energy it can produce that is actually specific energy source uh, battery what is specific power source it is uh, actually defining in one charge how much distance it can cover okay and what is the characteristic of specific power source ultra capacitor is a specific power source uh, because it is having high specific power uh, flywheel also is a high specific power thing it's also a power source but within a very small period of time this will work and it will give all the uh, it will supply all the energy or power to the uh, wheels or devices and it will totally be discharged so that is what it is saying when there is a sudden high demand of power then the electrical source that is a battery and flywheel together they supply the uh, driving wheels so this is the concept of flywheel this is the basic structure of a typical flywheel you are finding it's a constant stress principle you can find there is a vacuum here and there is a flywheel in between and below there are the magnetic bearings and this is the housing so there is a casing outside here is a magnetic bearing and there this bearing also is uh, the, whatever is the below magnetic bearing they are actually working with magnetic levitation so they are, they are not directly connected why vacuum because vacuum is actually reducing the windage loss and rotor of electric machine so the rotor generator set is there below so initially the motor is rotating the flywheel then motor is stopped then flywheel rotates and it runs the generator okay so and regenerative braking also we can use this flywheel so constant stress principle may be employed in the design of ultra high speed flywheel so ultra high speed flywheel means where it is less speed is very high so to achieve maximum energy storage every element every element in the rotor should be equally stressed that means every element should be uh, able to withstand high stress to its maximum limit the result in a shape uh, of gradually decreasing thickness and theoretically approaches uh, at zero as a radius approaches infinity okay that means it should be as flat as possible and it should be as thin as possible so that is the best uh, construction of uh, flywheel so due to the extreme high rotating speed and the reduce the aerodynamic loss and friction loss the housing inside with the flywheel is spinning is always vacuumed and contactless so contactless we need magnetic bearing there is no direct contact between the bearing and the rotating flywheel part so this is a construction so this can be asked as a five marks question you have to draw this diagram and you have to explain this few facts that is why bearing is magnetic it is using magnetic levitation why it should be flat and thin because it wants to it wants to rotate with maximum speed possible because this is ultra high speed flywheel uh, why it should be vacuum to reduce the windage loss and all those things you have to explain so the electric machine is one of the most important components inside the flywheel since it has critical impact on the performance of the system so pm brushless dc motor that means whatever uh, thing we are using inside the flywheel that should be having as less weight as possible so pm bl dc we have seen it is very effective it can run very fast but in that case it is having very less weight okay so pm bl dc are usually uh, in the flywheel system apart from processing high power density and high efficiency the pm bl dc motor has unique advantage that no heat is generated so we have seen the pm bl dc as there is no commutator there is no brush there is no mechanical friction it is wasting a very less power hysteresis eddy current loss is very less and as there is no friction of bearing and commutator and all those things not bearing uh, brush and commutator in that case there is no heat generation so this is a particular essential for a uh, rotor to work in a vacuum environment to minimize the windage loss and not only pm bl dc but also we can use the srm in the flywheel machine so swiss reluctance motor is also a very promising candidate for application in a flywheel system srm has simple construction and can operate efficiently at very high speed in addition the srm possesses a large extended constant power speed region we have seen that so uh, control region of srm is quite high so which allows more energy in the flywheel that can be delivered so in this extended speed region only the machine excitation flux can be varied so uh, which is easily realized on the contrary the pm brushless motor shows some difficulty in weakening the field flux so what is the uh, gist is we can use pm bldc that is a very big contender uh, for a flywheel motor or we can use srm for the flywheel motor
So this is the construction of the flywheel. This is how it looks. So there is quite a complex construction. So there is housing, additional housing, and other things. So there is a ring gear inside. So there is a lot of spring arrangement inside it. So this uh, flywheel cover. So this is just for your look. This is uh, not going to be asked in the exam or something. Uh, this is the flywheel. How it looks. So the wheel uh, and the whole arrangement is actually encased within some big uh, mechanical casing. This is a side view. How it looks. This is the front view. And here, the very big wheel you can find here. Uh, this is a flywheel for steam engine. So these are some of the images which we have seen. Uh, before going for the operating principle of flywheel, let us see uh, one video. So the video is for 10 minutes or at least six to seven minutes. We will be watching. Uh, they are explaining all the latest uh, understanding about flywheel. So I will minimize this presentation and I will run a different kind of thing. That is, I will run a video and uh, you just see this. Let me uh, arrange it. Give me one or two minutes. I will just upload it. So it is a future energy they are calling it. This is a future energy video that they are going to show. So I'm sharing my screen now. I think it is visible now. So this is a one minute video and there is no explanation given, but see that. All these links I will be sharing. So this is the outside casing. Whatever is written, please go through. So flywheel is a solid cylinder. So there is a huge mass, okay, uh, which is kept at the top. And this is that bearing. This is a magnetic bearing, and there is no contact here. You are finding it is due to magnetic levitation. So magnetic levitation is the way the uh, that uh, train, uh, electric train, this work. Uh, you just find out. So flywheel is a solid cylinder with a large mass. It spins at tremendous speed, making several thousand rotations per minute because we want a huge amount of inertia. It is half pi omega square. Mechanical failure can be catastrophic because of the huge forces involved. That means once it, suppose it opens and it, it can break everything inside the engine. So that's why it, it is kept in a casing. It is with a strong casing, it's outside casing. Motor and generator, you can say the below part here is the uh, generating. So there's a symbol of electricity. The motor and generator is here. Initially, the motor rotates uh, the flywheel. And when the flywheel is rotating full, the motor is switched off. And then it gives back the energy to the generator, which is kept here. So this flywheel is rotating the generator because generator requires an initial rotation and it can produce electricity. So motor is an electricity to mechanical uh, conversion. And that happens initially. Uh, the flywheel rotates because only the vehicle is moving, engine is moving, it is rotating the flywheel. And after that, even if uh, we are not uh, giving any kind of electricity supply, we chop off or we cut that motor supply here to the flywheel, then the rotation of this huge mass flywheel, it will rotate the engine, engine will produce electricity and give back to the supply. So that is a regenerative kind of a thing. So motor and generator, when energy being stored, electricity drives the motor to spin the flywheel initially. When the stored energy is being recovered, the motor and generator to convert the spinning motion back to the electricity. So it's a motor generator kind of a construction, likewise. So magnetic bearing, which is there below, uh, the wheel is supported using magnetic levitation. That means there is no contact. There is no contact between the bearings. So the way the electric train, metro train, and all this thing works. So the uh, because of levitation, the whole body is actually a little bit higher than the uh, the rail railway. Okay, so there there is no electrical contact like this. So it runs on the magnetic levitation. Now they are talking about the vacuum. So this this part this is a strong casing and it is uh, there is a pump. This is a pump. It is actually sucking out all the air from this uh, pump so that there is no air inside this chamber and wind is loss is very less. All the errors out, you can check here like this. So this is what is called as 
uh, the very basic explanation. Now I will show you another video. One person is there who will explain what is the flywheel concept. <laughs> Guys, are you able to uh, listen to the audio? Can anybody please reply? Are you able to listen to the audio? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Okay, so that is the problem then. At least you see the video. Uh, so I'll be posting the link. So there is a this compatibility issue then. So at least see the video, whatever this person says. In this case, the kinetic energy is stored in the spinning wheel. So this outside casing you are finding is a flywheel. And inside there is the motor generator coil. So this motor generator is actually uh, getting energized by the flywheel thing. So this is the rotational energy. K is equal to half into I into omega square. <clears throat> I is the inertia and omega is the angular velocity. So now there are two car wheel in the same uh, with the same mass. Okay, these are two car wheel with the same mass. One is rotating with 30 km per hour, another is rotating with 100 km per hour. So if you are applying the same force, uh, the right side wheel will take much more time to come to the rest because of inertia. Same thing, they will be okay. So the faster one will take higher time to come to the rest. Now take the same thing, but uh, take two different wheels, uh, 5 kilogram and 10 kilogram. And uh, both are uh, going with the same speed. Then we'll be finding that the heavier one will take more time to come to the rest. Okay. So, so there's the flywheel, which is actually storing the energy here. So whenever the uh, car is rotating, the energy is uh, being stored. A lateron, whenever we are disconnecting the mechanical battery, at that time, uh, the flywheel will be uh, stored, giving back the energy. So initially, in the potter wheels, the flywheel was being used. Uh, nowadays, uh, we are seeing that uh, machine, or machine, so this is the person who had uh, 
design flywheel long back so this is the torpedo kind of a thing inside this so this is the flywheel that he had designed and this is that bus okay so this is the bus in switzerland uh, almost before 40 years they had designed the flywheel in this and this is how the flywheel looks like and at every stoppage the flywheel was being the vehicle was being charged electrically this is the flywheel thing and this is the bus which was being operating in switzerland almost 45 to 50 bus and this is called as gyro bus but since then several improvements have been made in the flywheel and uh, the technology has taken quite a bigger step so the main uh, advantages main uh, advancements that has happened in the flywheel is in the designing of that uh, bearing without any kind of contact and in the uh, casing in the uh, sucking of the air to reduce windage loss and the motor generator uh, the different types of motor that is bldc srm uh, all those design actually has helped this ultra high speed flywheel mm -hmm. so uh, this is uh, this is how the uh, actually motor looks like uh, inside the bldc and also these are the uh, motor field so these are the windings and these are rotors and with that uh, the flywheel is connected so ultra high, high speed flywheel whatever big disc is there this is actually connected with this rotor so this is that disc flywheel disc and this is connected with the rotor so the same device can act as a motor same device can act as a generator if you see construction of dc motor and generator their constructions are same so the same device can be used motor first uh, yeah. rotate the flywheel and then uh, stop supplying uh, electricity to the motor then the rotation of flywheel will produce the electricity and you can take it back so it's a same motor generator thing see so it is saying that flywheel energy uh, is actually stored in low speed and high speed uh, both are the thing so low speed is uh, rotating with 10000 rpm so in that case uh, mass is more so modern uh, high speed flywheel 100000 rpm that they are saying so it can rotate with 100000 rpm so initial low speed uh, rpm was uh, almost 10000 and high speed uh, flywheel they are saying is a uh, 100000 rpm that means we are playing with this omega in case of ultra high speed flight this is another uh, stronetic this is actually the uh, ultra high speed flywheel uh, connect connections and all the components and all they are going to say so these are the components what they are saying the flywheels have the higher uh, response to the frequency changes that's why there are a lot of storage spills places and all these things around the world they are actually using high speed for energy storage so there are many there are many places so these are all the internal constructions of flywheels and everything all these things stator magnetic bearing rotor housing have other things so this is a very interesting uh, likewise so this is also a flywheel this is another flywheel arrangement this is a very interesting link uh, this ultra modern vehicles are also using a uh, flywheel and electrical grid they are also using the flywheels that is what being said so actually it is providing so this is the this is the uh, storage for tesla what you are seeing now on the screen and there are many places in the whole world where the uh just find a stefanton new york so here the flywheel based energy storage is being uh used so there are <coughs> other places uh, around the world where the flywheel based energy storage are being used so these are very uh loss less kind of a uh, uh, technology and these are actually cleanest clean technology so how the flywheel is stacking up over other energy storage that is also explained here so it's a request please go through 
go through the slides and this is some uh, comparison you are finding that at present 2016 so this is a video of 2016 uh, cost per kilowatt hour this is actually how much is the unit produce is costing so now cost per uh, kilowatt hour for flywheel in 2016 it is around 1500 to 6000 okay usd so this is quite very costly but by uh, 2030 it will come down to 1000 to 3019 so mass production and other technology development and all other things it will be falling into this range lithium ion 2016 for every uh, kilowatt hour energy it is producing we are it is costing 200 to 1250 or 1260 uh, usd but by 2030 it will fall to 77 to 574 so what they are asking is uh, you to check is from 6000 uh, to 3900 it is falling so it is becoming almost two third and here also it is falling lithium ion so this is the uh, chemical energy this is falling from 1260 up to 574 so even uh, in 2030 you will be finding that flywheel will be almost uh, six almost six times or more than six times costlier so per unit uh, uh, energy generated by the flywheel almost will be six times or uh, six and a half times costlier than lithium ion battery energy so these are the uh, comparison kind of thing you have to do and whenever you are doing whenever you are doing anything related to energy at that time you have to find out how much is the uh, cost per uh, kilowatt hour that is a very important thing that you have to find out okay so uh, i would expect you to just go through this uh, slides and there are a lot of other things uh, talked about this flywheel so mainly it's a very a big rotational kind of a thing and that is actually uh, giving us the electricity so a lot of other arrangements and uh, cases are given so this is a video you please check okay so after that what i will do is i will go back to my uh, slide again and uh, i will be i will again go back to my slide and we will finish off the session uh, the theoretically so what i was talking about uh, what i was talking about is what is the uh, flywheel energy and uh, how much is the or what is the formula for flywheel energy uh, that thing we will see and let me just launch my ppt let me just launch my ppt okay so i think it is visible now at your side so what all we have seen so far uh, we started this session with uh, this uh, ultra high speed flywheel and what are the basic uh, features where it was used so this is the casing we have seen the motor generator can be the same device initially it is uh, running the flywheel and later on it is uh, generating the energy and giving it back so all those things we have seen then what we have found out is uh, it is put in some kind of casing uh, to avoid the damage it is actually uh, put in some kind of vacuum kind of uh, environment so that uh, wind is loss is less then we have found what is the basic construction of flywheel and what are the motors that can be used for uh, flywheel so pmbldc is the best contender srm also can be used and uh, this is a flywheel construction and uh, now we are coming to the flywheel operating principle so we have already seen a rotating flywheel stores energy ef f stands for flywheel jf is the inertia omega f is the rotating uh, angular uh, velocity so jf is the moment of inertia of the flywheel in kg meter square per second omega f is the angular velocity radian per second and enhancing the omega f of the flywheel is the key technique so that is what is done in the ultra speed flywheel so just now whatever video is there if you see they are talking about hundred of thousand sorry uh, hundred of thousand of rpm that means one lakh rpm uh, that is the way the ultra high speed flywheel is moving at present uh, speed of over 60000 rpm is being achieved so now current technology i'm talking about it is giving hundreds of thousand rpm now here the same thing is given so this is the axle so the power is given to the other uh, uh, mechanical devices uh, this is the housing this is the flywheel inside so it should be as thin as possible chapta and it should be spread bigger uh, this is the electric machine so there is a motor generator convertible kind of a device then there is the rotor stator and there is the power so initially the power is given so that this flywheel is rotating 
a lateron uh, when flywheel is rotating the energy is taken back to this or electronics and at this point we are getting generated uh, electricity so that is actually regenerative kind of a thing very important three statements are given here so with modern technology it is difficult to use the mechanical energy stored in a flywheel directly to propel a vehicle due to the need for continuous variation in the transmission with a wide gear ratio range so uh, one very important thing is flywheel cannot drive a vehicle so mechanically flywheel can rotate but flywheel cannot drive a vehicle that is a very important thing so once engine rotates flywheel is rotating with engine and uh, because of its inertia it doesn't stop instantly so after the engine starts it takes quite a time for the flywheel to stop but then also the flywheel is not able to propel a engine or vehicle directly because the need for continuous variation in the transmission so this is a problem for battery also uh, what was said that evh uh, electronic vehicles uh, they require uh, that continuous start stop start stop kind of thing that actually troubles the uh, battery based vehicles and that is actually uh, affecting the flywheel based vehicle as well okay. so the community uh, commonly uh, used approach is to couple an electric machine to flywheel directly or through a transmission to continue a so called mechanical battery so flywheel will not be uh, driving the vehicle mechanically but what will happen is flywheel will generate energy and that will uh, charge the battery and the battery will drive the vehicle so it is mainly a uh, electrical energy generation device okay the electric machine functioning as the uh, energy input and output port converts the mechanical energy into electrical energy or vice versa as shown in the right so uh, this is what is the function of the flywheel it is actually doing some regenerative action so next topic next day when we will be seeing we'll be talking about a regenerative braking okay and that time we'll be find that the regeneration uh, this flywheel is uh, this flywheel is uh, making a good impact during regeneration that is mechanical into electrical energy conversion so power capacity of flywheel so we have seen initially the formula ef is equal to half jf omega square so energy by time is equal to power and we are finding def dt so the power that a flywheel delivers or receives can be obtained by differentiating the energy so energy if you are differentiating with respect to time you are finding power and then the same equation ef so if you are doing that finally what we are finding is omega f into tf okay so tf is nothing but the torque produced at the flywheel so tf is the torque acting on the wheels by the electric machines uh, when the flywheel discharges its energy the electric machine acts as a generator and converts the mechanical energy into the flywheel into electrical energy so both are possible initially we are rotating the flywheel so that's a uh, uh, electrical to mechanical conversion and later on whenever the electrical uh, supply stops at the time it generates the uh, electrical energy because in the back side so both the things are possible on the other hand when the flywheel is charged the electric machine acts as a motor so initially we are doing that so we are charging the uh, flywheel and converts the electrical energy into mechanical energy stored in the flywheel above equation indicates that the power capacity of a flywheel system depends completely on the power capacity of the electric machine so whatever motor generator set or the device that we are using uh, power capacity of that device is actually deciding how much will be the power capacity of the flywheel now this is the characteristic of the uh, flywheel so an electric machine it uses has a distinct operating regions so the same kind of graph we have seen in case of the field uh, armature voltage control or voltage current control in case of dc machine uh, what we have found was initially uh, a constant torque is kept up to a certain uh, speed and after that uh, above that speed which is omega b here a constant voltage is kept okay so initially this is a constant torque increasing voltage and constant flux region and after that it is constant power and constant constant voltage and field weakening region so angular velocity keeps on increasing so whatever is the overall uh, vehicle speed in that we are having two ranges so whenever the vehicle speed is less we are keeping a constant torque because the vehicle is starting now uh, the vehicle is kept in the lower gear uh, the the way we used to find it and when the vehicle uh, is torque is picked up then we are trying to supply the same voltage to the device uh, which is running 
the vehicles. So an electric machine usually has two distinct operating regions in its characteristic constant torque and constant power region. So this rightward region, when the voltage is constant, it's called as a constant power region. In constant torque region, which is initially between zero to omega zero or omega B, uh, the voltage of the electric machine is proportional. So you can see here, the voltage is increasing in the constant torque region. So the constant torque is being produced, but the voltage is increasing. So voltage which is, whichever is being supplied to the motor, okay, which is running the flywheel, that is initially increasing. So voltage is initially zero, gradually the voltage is being increasing, torque in the uh, flywheel is being kept constant. So the voltage of the electric machine is proportional to its angular velocity and the magnetic flux in the air gap is constant. That is the initial part. However, in the constant power region, voltage is kept constant. So now the uh, generator region has started. So, and the magnetic field is weakened and the increase in the machine angular velocity. So, in the next part, the angular velocity is increased. In the first part, the voltage is being increased continuously. So, during charging of the flywheel, that is accelerating the flywheel from a low speed omega zero to a higher speed omega b or maximum speed omega max. Uh, the example that torque delivered from the electric machine is given uh, in the uh, formula that is Tm is equal to If into d omega f dt, where the electric machine is directly connected to the flywheel. Okay, so this is the, uh, this is not very difficult to understand. This is actually a torque voltage profile uh, versus rotational speed. So x axis is rotational speed, y axis is torque and voltage both shown in the y axis. So only you have to remember that initially the torque is kept constant and uh, later on the power is kept constant. So initially it's a constant torque and later on it's a constant power region and whenever the torque is constant at that time flux in the air gap is constant and later on for constant voltage or constant power the flux is actually weakened and then the voltage is being kept constant different flywheel technologies so what are the different technologies we are fi finding in the flywheel so one very important thing is told here what is meant by tensile strength rho so there is a limit beyond which the tensile strength rho of the material uh, constituting the flywheel cannot withstand the stress resulting from the centrifugal force. So it is rotating very fast. So there is continuous stress uh, coming on the flywheel mechanical material. So the maximum stress acting on the flywheel depend on its geometry, which is given by specific density rho. So uh, whenever we are talking about flywheel material, it's all about the uh, relationship between uh, tensile strength and specific uh, density. You can find out here. So there are four materials uh, talked about here. One is E glass, graphite epoxy, uh, S glass, and the Kevlar epoxy. So these are the four things which is taken from the modern uh, electric vehicle technology, Oxford University Press paper. So they are saying that maximum benefit can be obtained by adopting flywheel material that have maximum ratio of uh, tensile strength and specific density, like this. So if so, uh, if the uh, specific uh, the speed of the flywheel is limited by material strength, the theoretical specific energy is proportional to uh, ratio of tensile strength divided by specific density. So this is something which is going towards a little bit into mechanical domain, but at least you should understand this much that tensile strength. What is tensile strength? Whenever the uh, wheel rotates, every part of it uh, is going through some kind of stress. Okay. So that's why we find that sometimes only the rotation create cracks on wheels. Okay. It is doing nothing, just it is rotating something, but due to the stress, a crack develops on the wheels. Okay. So here, this rho by, uh, so this rho and uh, this is tender strength divided by specific density. This ratio actually is deciding what is going to be the uh, material best suitable for uh, flywheel design. And from that, we are finding that the scalar epoxy uh, which is having tensile strength of 1930, but that is producing the best ratio of uh, 383. So this is the best material for a flywheel. So these are different flywheel technologies means uh, materials. Ultra high split flywheels, there are two problems. The first problem is in contrast to applying the ultra high split flywheel. Ultra high split means that thousand, uh, sorry, 100,000 uh, RPM speed. So for energy storage in stationary plants, its application to EVs suffer from two specific problems. So flywheel are used in industries also, and flywheel are used in EV and HEV also. So what is the difference? So EV HEV is having a problem that gyroscopic forces occur when a vehicle departs from its straight 
time course. So if the vehicle is running straight, then there is no problem. But if there is deviation and all this thing that actually affects the gyroscopic nature or the uh, flywheel performance. So such as in turning, pitching, uh, upward, downward, all those. So these forces essentially reduce, uh, reduce the maneuverability of the vehicle. So turning here and there, taking turns and all, they affect the flywheel performance. So if the flywheel is damaged, its energy stored in mechanical form is released in a very short period of time. The corresponding power released is very high, which can cause severe damage to the vehicle. For example, a one kilowatt hour flywheel breaks apart one to five seconds. It generates huge amount of power. So containment uh, in a case of failure is presently the most significant obstacle to implement the ultra high speed flywheel. So containing the damage, mechanical damage if the flywheel breaks that is actually a very big problem or there is a big challenge in case of flywheel. Companies for uh, ultra high speed flywheel, so you can find there are a lot of uh, companies, uh, LL, NL, Avcon, Northcorp, Grumman, all those things they are producing the flywheel and what is the range of flywheel that they are producing, it is given here. So your syllabus uh, topic ends here, but uh, there are two, three slides uh, I would like to explain, which is called as hybridization of energy storages. So in hybridization of energy storages, it combines uh, two or more. So in the same chapter, that is the 13 chapter towards end, you will be finding this uh, material. So it's, which is more important than flywheel. Okay, so here actually hybridizing means we are actually mixing two or more energy sources together. So that advantage of each can be brought together. Okay, so hybridization of a chemical battery and ultra capacitor can overcome the problem such as low specific power of chemical battery and low specific energy of ultra capacitor. So ultra capacitor has high uh, power capacity, battery has high energy capacity. We are taking the good for each and we are clubbing them together so that hybridized energy storage consists of two basic energy sources, one with high specific energy battery, another with the high specific power, that is the ultra capacitor. So here, uh, whatever sources we have seen so far, that is battery, ultra capacitor flywheel how they can be put together to help the uh, hybrid electrical vehicle and electrical vehicle so this is the basic operation of the system uh, so there are three operations this is the hybrid powering so here you are finding high specific energy storage uh, this is a battery high specific power storage so together they are supplying the power converter and they are giving the load so this is kind of an ancillary service or auxiliary service so this is when the power demand is very high so these two slides are very important and i forgot to put star here but uh, these two slides or these three slides whatever is being shown will definitely be asked in the exam so please prepare this so high power demand means specific energy specific power that is battery and uh, ultra capacitor or flywheel so flywheel and ultra capacitor both are high specific power sources so that together is uh, giving the supply to the load through power converter so the basic operation of this system that is high power demand or hybrid powering system is illustrated here in high power demand operations such as acceleration and hill climbing both the high energy and high power source uh, it gives energy to the load second thing low power demand so in this case power demand is low so high specific energy storage that is battery battery is applying the load and at the same time battery is actually charging the high specific power storage so in this case a load does not much power because the car is on flat uh, road in this case this battery is giving <clears throat> whatever power required for the uh, car driving on the flat road less power is less energy is required but the other energy is actually charging the ultra capacitor or other energy battery energy is charging the uh, flywheel that is there okay so there are two directions of power one is in the forward one is in the reverse so low power such as constant speed cruising, high specific energy storage, okay, they are actually charging the ultra capacitor or the flywheel. And the last one, this is called regenerative braking, very important. So the dark line in both this diagram is a primary power flow. You can find here, there's a primary power flow and this is the secondary power flow. And in this case, you are finding that primary power flow is coming to the, uh, from the load towards the high specific power storage. Because this is uh, regenerative braking, this is charging. So load is now giving back energy and power. Main power it is giving to the uh, ultra high speed flywheel or the ultra capacitor. And less uh, power it is giving to the for the charging of the battery. And this is actually regenerative braking which is called as hybrid charging. 
So here hybrid power uh, supply and hybrid charging, both operations are explained together. So in regenerative braking operation, the peak power is absorbed by the high peak power is absorbed by the high specific power storage. So this is the peak power, this is absorbing it and only a limited part is absorbed by the high specific energy storage. So while uh, hybrid charging or regenerative braking, the high specific power storage is mainly charged. So in the previous case, it is getting charged to the high specific energy storage. But in the last case, that is called as hybrid charging, uh, it is getting charged to the load. So regenerative braking is mainly charging the high specific power storage. In this way, the whole system is much smaller in weight and size uh, than if any one of the alone was energy storage. So if there was only one battery, we had to keep a very big battery. We are not doing that. So we are keeping a big battery considerable and we are keeping a, a ultra capacitor also together so overall system size is reducing this is a large slide this is actually saying direct and parallel connection of battery and ultra capacitor so they are both connected in parallel and they are giving out that vt that is a terminal voltage and which is given to run a vehicle so that was all about ultra capacitor so two topics remaining from this module one is the regenerative braking we will see that first thing on friday and before that only i will upload uh, one lecture session I have named it as 19A. So lecture 19 was uh, the battery system. 19A I have said as battery management system. So these two things, if we do, this third module will be over. So target would be to uh, finish it off by this week. So third module will be over by this week. Thank you.